Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you've got gas. The great American auto scene back again on a Thursday before we go racing at Irwindale Drag Strip. Come on out tonight. Gates open at 4 p.m. Gas, the great American auto scene since 1990. Your source for automotive information and some humor thrown in from time to time. Now, yesterday, if you read my posts on Facebook and other social media sites, you learned that Chevrolet, Generous Motors, was again canceling the Camaro. And I say again because for those of you who don't remember, Camaro was canceled in the 2002 model year. That was the last year of the Camaro. It did come back for the 2010 model year, but in those eight years, seven, eight years that it was out of production and not on the streets, Fords dominated with the Mustang. Now, the only other competitor to the Mustang was the newly introduced Challenger that came out, shown to the public in 2003, and it was an immediate hit, and it sold well. Ford and Chrysler understood the market. Generous Motors, they're lagging behind. They, for some reason, have mental block. Now, I say that in all honesty, because you have to go back in history. Ford was the leading low-priced vehicle. Now, we're going back to the beginning of automotive time. Chevrolet was developed and brought into General Motors to compete directly against Ford. Now, Chevrolet had a V8 engine overhead valve in 1917, way ahead of Ford. Generous Motors, in their infinite wisdom, said, no, 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 no. We don't want Chevrolet to be a performance vehicle. We want them to be an economy vehicle to compete against Ford. And they did. And they did quite well, outselling Ford for decades. Now, they went back to the four-cylinder. They canceled the V8. The overhead valve four-cylinder that Chevrolet had was very good, was very reliable, had good performance. At the time, Ford's flathead four-cylinder was okay. The Model T was all they had. They later went to the Model A, and then the Model B, and then the introduction of the V8 in 1932. Now, that was ahead of Chevrolet's mass-produced V8. Now, I say mass-produced because... The small numbers from 1917 to maybe a year or two later were not that significant in the Model D, I believe it was, Chevrolet. But that's the first time Chevrolet one-upped Ford, and then Ford just kept on one-upping them all through life. Now, let's go back or move ahead to 1959, the introduction of the Ford Falcon. 1960 model year introduced in 1959. What does Chevrolet introduce? The Corvair, technically more advanced more radical, well-received by some, but not the mainstream buyer. Chevrolet rushed the Nova, or the Chevy, to the market. Beginning in 1959 development, it was introduced in 1962. Now, Chevrolet had a direct competitor to the Ford Falcon. Again, a number of years behind, but they're catching up, and they did quite well. Move ahead, 1964. What does Ford do? They introduce the Mustang. Now, we can go back even further because in 1961, Ford introduced their midsize range, the Ford Fairlane. Chevrolet, mm, crickets, nothing to compete. 1964, Mustang introduced. Crickets again, Chevrolet doesn't introduce anything. Until September 1966, when they finally have something to counter the Mustang, the Camaro. Instant success, 1967 model year sold in late 1966. Now we've got head-to-head -head competition for the Mustang. It cuts into Mustang sales. Mustang's still ahead. Mustang's still out there. Ford's still out there. Mid-sized cars with big engines. Ford, right there. 427s, 390s in the mid-size Fairlanes. When does GM come up with a mid-size big block Chevrolet? 1965 model year, only a couple of hundred were built. 1966, it finally becomes the standard equipment on the SS Chevelle. 1966, Ford one-ups them, continues to one-up them. Now we move forward because there's a lot of stuff in between that. General Motors gets rid of their rear drive platform. Ford dominates the police, the taxi, and the utility vehicle market with the LTD. They just were out there. They even had the Mercury Marauder that was definitely killing anything Chevrolet had because Chevy didn't have a rear drive platform in a full-size car. 
They thought they could do it with their front-wheel drive Monte Carlo and Impala. Did they do it? Eh, stunk. Sucked. Sales dropped dramatically from their rear drive platforms. Ford still out at hand. Now, Ford eventually does drop the rear drive platform, but it's an economy move. And Ford is restructuring. In 2010, Generous Motors grabs the money from the feds for reorganizing. Now, they paid the money back in a short period of time, less than the feds gave it. What did Ford do? They divested themselves of vehicles that were not selling well, no federal money, no federal restrictions, no federal bothering of operations. But at the same time, the hierarchy at GM, the people with the memory and the know-how leave. Now, I'm working for GM at the time, and we go to the proving grounds in Milford, and we see an interesting vehicle. It's a pickup truck based on a car. Hmm, sounds just like the El Camino. What do the marketing guys tell us? Oh, that's going to be the new Pontiac. We go, the what? The Pontiac. Pontiac never sold a truck. Not a, not a pickup truck. Now, this is based on the Australian Holden Commodore Monaro chassis. And it is good looking. Sells well down under. What does Generous Motors do? Well, we're going to sell through Pontiac dealers. What do they do next? They cancel Pontiac. It never sees the day of the light of day. So it's gone. Now we come up to 2012 or 2002, excuse me. And what happens? Camaro, gone. Why? No one knows. Was it selling well? Reasonably well for the market. Was there any competition in 2002? No. Did they know the Challenger was coming out? Of course they did. Who was the major competition? The Ford Mustang. Now, the Mustang's been in production since introduction in 1984 or 1964, and it has stayed in production. Now, Ford definitely thought about canceling it and replacing it with a vehicle built by Mazda, and it ended up being the Ford Probe. They got so much feedback from owners and enthusiasts, they go, yeah, front-wheel drive sport coupe just isn't going to make it with the Mustang name. We're going to keep the Mustang in production. Yeah, it was based on the Pinto for a few years, but it sold better. Yes, look at the numbers. It sold better. The Fox Body Mustangs came out in 1979, and the Mustang sales skyrocketed again. Now, what do they have for competition? Well, the Camaro's still around for a few more years. But Generous Motors, hierarchy, again, you've got all the big wigs, all the people with the history, all the people with the knowledge are retiring. They're taking the package. They're leaving General Motors. General Motors is being restructured. Get out while the getting is good. They froze their retirement accounts. They did all sorts of things. People left. The division I worked for was even dropped completely, only to bring it back a year ago. Hmm. What happened? Ten years of no product? Ford flourishing with medium-duty trucks? Why? Because the GM hierarchy didn't have the knowledge, the intelligence, or the forethought to stay in production. And now they do it again. Camaro, gone. Next year, last year, Camaro being eliminated. Why? Well, sales are still good. Mustang is flourishing. Chrysler's eliminating the Challenger. Ooh, another competitor gone. Why would you get out of the market when you're going to be the one of two vehicles in the market? I don't know. Chevrolet cancels the Camaro. It's gone again. Chevrolet has this history of either not meeting the market, coming in late, or canceling vehicles that are viable. Why? No one knows except Generous Motors. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas. The morning edition, the demise of the Camaro is in sight. What will they do? Well, they may bring it back as a golf cart. I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you've got gas. The great American auto seed. Check me out at Irwindale Drag Strip on Thursday nights. We'll be there. YouTube, Facebook, Spectre or Sketcher, Anchor FM. That's where you find gas, the great American auto scene, part of Two Tired Guys Productions and Talking About Cars with Randy Cardoon. All right, you guys, have a great day. I'm headed out to the track. We're going racing. Yeah, the track's been freshly washed. Three days of rain. Should be good. Take care, folks. Have a great day.